The clutch slip is really troubling. First thing I want to do is just make sure that the fluid level is okay. If the fluid level is too low, it could just be a leak in the clutch system, basically. It's not looking low, but it also ain't looking pretty. This fluid should be clear, and it's quite dark. Today I'm gonna use this for the first time. Motive has a power bleeder. It attaches to the top, you pressurize it, bleed your brakes. This takes out the hole needing to pump the pedal a bit. However, I think you still need to do the clutch pump wise. I have a hose hooked up to you follow this metal line and you see this little plastic elbow is our um, slave cylinder and then there's the bleeder back there and I've got a hose connected to it with a little bottle up here and I would use the motive bleeder but I've got my favorite assistant today so Sarah pump that clutch go ahead and hold the pedal down and I'll open the valve okay let me know when you're holding she's holding Even more withholding than the IRS Oh, it's hard to get access to this. It's a plastic bleeder. I don't like that at all. Yeah, I'll let you know when the bottle starts filling up. Boy, this is ugly. Okay. We're just gonna try to get some clear fluid out here. Give me a push. Yum. The clutch reservoir has a wall inside of here that shares the master reservoir. And the whole reason behind keeping that wall high up is that if you lose your clutch fluid from a break in the line or something, you can still use your brakes. All right, continue the pumping. Down and up, and down and up. And then eventually when we get hydraulic pressure, the force of the um, pressure plate should be what brings it back up. Okay, is it all the way to the floor? Yeah. And give me some more pumps. Hold at the end of this one. Uh, one more. <laughs> Come on, bro, your fluid's not black. <laughs> Ew. Can't even see daylight through that. It's amazing. Yeah. You bet. That's after an all night bender. Bender? Bender. Bender? Binder. Bender. And give me three more. Three pumps. Watch as we start dark. A little bit of darkness again. At first I was a little annoyed that somebody painted the intercooler silver, but now it makes it stick out a little bit and kind of gives it that whole, I'm a turbo look. <laughs> cool. Having done all the brake bleeding, it's now time to put the intake tubes and box back in and then we'll go out for a drive i don't know if that clutch slippage is going to be any better because of brake fluid unless the slave cylinder was just sticking from over adjusted or not over adjusted but over dirty fluid i don't think uh, that's really that possible but who knows the paddle feels good everything else feels good but we'll go for a drive and see and i cleared the check engine light code now that i've replaced some vacuum hoses tbd if that comes back you know you see that, Fulvia? It's a Lancia, Italian made. I am using the S60R right now as a um, parts hauler for some Italian car parts. That's my day job. I just finished doing uh, exhaust removal on this 1962 Lancia Flaminia 3B Coupe by Pininfarina. Boy, there's a mouthful. And now it's time to get the uh, control arms done on this car on the passenger side. It's been really clunky. Unfortunately, today the check engine light did come back on after probably a hundred miles of driving. Bummer. I was really looking forward to it just staying off, but oh well. It's a P2R. It's going to be a journey. I'm going to look for more vacuum leaks later, but tonight control arms. And then I got to go home because I parked my 164 on the wrong side of the street. That's a two hour drive mistake. Street sweepers tomorrow, you know what I mean?
this center bushing with any weight from the control arm completely ripped out. So when it's, ouch, something fell on me. When it was on its, uh, when the weight of the control arm was holding this down, you know, it was just awful. I'm surprised it's not completely ripped out, you know, to the point where I can remove it, but yeah. It would walk. Having a bushing that bad, when you hit a bump, the whole wheel just kind of does this. So that's really bad. I'm glad it didn't take out the ball joint. It seems like the ball joint survived and uh, the new ball joint's installed. I'm gonna put this arm on, but right now I'm working on replacing this engine mount down here, just in case it's ripe. There is the old mount. Here's the new one, super hefty. Look at the bushing inside so you can get yourself an idea of how that all works and looks. Two holes. I've removed one of the bolts and I have the jack here with some flat wood, broad flat wood, and I'm going to lift up just enough to get this to take the weight off of the mount and then drop the new one in very quickly because my jack sags. Oh boy, this side is really snowballed. It's like four hours later, and because I'm trying to be quiet, I can't use power tools. Things got kind of tough, but uh, that's not the real reason. Things just started stripping. Couldn't get it all lined up right. Those bolts are funky because the oil pan's in the way. And uh, yeah, just kept disassembling things. It's super windy tonight. Ugh, already after midnight, I just gotta get home. Okay, folks, I'm gonna have to sneak out of here because it's 2.30 in the morning. I just made myself a sandwich. I gotta grab a drink. Look at this clutch. This cost $1,300 because Italian cars, oh boy. Anyway, an hour and a half job took about five and a half. So oopsie daisy. Let's see how she drives now. Should be just good as new. Well, good news and bad news. Good news is the front control arms feel pretty great. There's no more clunking up there. The bad news is the rears need to be done, especially the rear right. I know that there's oil coming out of that shock. And while the 4C hasn't given me a code for it yet, it's pretty sloppy back there. And I do feel it doing this a lot, just wobbling around every time I hit a big bump. So it looks like this car is just gonna demand more and more of my time and money. But that's kind of expected, you know, I, up there it is again. Oi, oi, loading up this side is off. Uh, I kind of expected it to be like this, so I shouldn't be too surprised. It is a, a P2R, so I, how many times am I gonna say that, you know? Anyway, enjoy this nice view of uh, a rather unobstructed highway as we approach downtown Los Angeles. Come on, maybe it needed. Well, you get the point. Haha, <laughs> ambushed. You got me? Y'all ever try the short shifter mod? magical place. Nice. Nice. All right, Dave is home from hospital tomorrow. We want to make sure he's got himself a car that still starts. So we're going to give the 1900 a little bit of attention today. Oh, there's no space in this car. Let's see if she still fires up. Sure enough. Do we have a choke? So 
there a push button starter? One of these was choke, right? That looks right. There she goes. Boy, this thing rattles to life. Well, here's what I have to say. We want to take this car to the Davis Auto Show. Let's see if we can make it happen. All right. We got ourselves a little fuel drip. Look at right there. These banjo bolts are known to be leakers. You gotta loosen it and tighten it up again. And that's how you seal the uh, O-ring. Otherwise, it's interesting to watch gasoline evaporate so quickly. Yeah. At least it's not catching fire. Oof. Imagine. I know, that'd be so bad. Anyway, dang. We started your car. She's clean, but she's definitely uh, dusty. <laughs> So you fed the plants, and I fed the plants in a different way. And my son. Go, Team Rocket! <laughs> I don't know if y'all realize how big this tree is. That's big. 